In this video, I'm going to explain how your average 501c3 pastor gets Genesis all wrong. And this is a big topic. It's something I'm very passionate about. So I could ramble for days and days. I'm, I'm just going to try to keep this short and dive straight into it. Here I have side-by-side -side KJV and NIV, just because sometimes I want to talk about certain words that are used. And let's just dive right in. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. So here, I think that there's already a lot that contradicts outer space NASA land. I think that your average 501c3 pastor will deny certain aspects, but they buy into the lie at large. And I think that this is part of the great deception. I think that this is just another example of the world hates the truth. And we're at the point where if a pastor stuck up for the Bible and took it literally and taught the Bible as it stands and, and told people where they live, where the Bible says they live, they're going to be hated. And I, I think that that is evidence, more evidence. But me personally, I found out about flat earth first and then I remembered, oh yeah, the Bible's flat earth and, and that just made me have so much more faith in the Bible. And I think that if you believed in the Bible, you believe in, in Jesus, if you find out about flat earth, if you can escape that ball earth deception, I think your faith is going to go up huge because I don't think that the two are compatible at all. There must be so much cognitive dissonance for people that, that believe both at the same time. I don't think it's possible. And the Big Bang is a good example because, so for instance, my pastor, I don't know, I don't, own him. I don't even like the, the title pastor, any of that stuff. I think that's all Pauline stuff, which I'm not that into. I, I don't believe in a hierarchy, a church hierarchy. And I mean, this is one of the problems too. And people who put themselves in these types of positions are going to be judged harder. So I think pastors really need to get their stuff together on especially topics like this and embrace the Bible and embrace the truth, what the Bible says, not your cope whatever your cope is that makes you believe the ball earth stuff. Anyways, pastors, I believe that they'll deny the part of the Big Bang that's it came from nothing. And that's just a really great argument for God in general, is that how does anything exist at all? You can't get something from nothing. It's, in my opinion, I think it's a very good argument that the fact that anything exists at all points to a creator who is outside of time because you can't get something from nothing. I, I believe that that's a true statement that, that something can't suddenly appear out of nowhere, that everything has a cause. And so for something to exist at all, I believe that there has to be a timeless, somebody who has never not existed that created something. Well, that got deep for a second, but let's talk about the face of the deep. In my mind, I go to water, that there already was water. And water is such an interesting compound. I think that this goes with, many people can see that water is special. There's something special about water. And so in my mind, that's very interesting that in the beginning, it seems like it was just an infinite plane of water. Let's keep reading. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. So most, uh, this is one of those instances of omission. Would people say, would, would a 501c3 pastor say, when God said, let there be light, that was the Big Bang? Well, what about the waters then? What, what was going on with the face of the waters? So was the Big Bang, there was already water? But then how was the water oriented? It says face. A face is a geometrical flat side. Like, think of the, a face of a cube or something. It's, it's one of the flat sides. So I, I would love to hear an explanation of that from a 501c3 pastor. Well, if the let there be light is supposed to be the Big Bang, what, what's the deal with the face of the waters happening before and the abyss, the deep, the face of the deep? I think that, yeah, that's in the beginning, there was just a huge expanse of water. That's probably still there. Maybe it does expand on forever. Maybe there is no edge to the water, and it just ex keeps going and going and going. God is infinite. God could create an infinite universe, I believe. Who knows? When they're talking, when people talk about the shape of the universe, if, 
if you're outside of the firmament and you keep traveling in one direction, do you loop back around from another side or something? Who knows? Let's keep reading. <clears throat> and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Another thing, yeah, light existed before the sun. Where maybe people would think like, oh, this light is like the light that we see. But, which I guess is almost kind of true it, the way that I believe it. I think that daylight and sunlight are two separate phenomenons. And I mean, this, this is one of those things where at the end of the day, it is actually like a, a known scientific fact. It is a known scientific fact that the light itself has its own glow or the, the sky itself, daylight itself has its own glow to it that is separate from the sun. And there's a lot of good, um, like, al alternative uh, scientific people out there that talk about this topic, the layers of the atmosphere and how they glow like a neon tube and stuff like that. But you won't hear it talked about in a, a science book, even though it is scientific in nature and true that the upper atmosphere has a glow to it. You'll see that they CGI that in when they do the the ISS stuff. You see the like blue glow that they put in. It's because that really is a, a truth that light, the, the atmosphere, upper atmosphere glows. And I think that that could be the light that's talked about here in Genesis 1, before the sun exists. But maybe, maybe a ball earth apologetics would say that that's like, the, that the Big Bang was bright or something. That's the light that God... But then separated from the darkness, they'd say... Anyways, let's keep reading. <clears throat> Verse 6. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And even, even in the NIV, they're talking about this dividing the waters from the waters, but it is a little bit more ambiguous. Let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. That sounds more ambiguous to me. A lot of times I think that the language chosen in NIV is purposefully to be deceptive, to muddy the waters. <clears throat> Interesting choice of... I didn't intend on that. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, what my mind comes to on this too is the Israeli flag. Go look at the Israel flag. There's a blue stripe below. There's the white in the middle with the star and then the blue stripe above it. I think that that's talking about the waters below, the waters above. In times past, when, when the Bible was being written, it was known that they were talking about a solid structure. So why do 501c3 people not talk about that? And it's just an omission thing. The, this all seems like they just want to sweep it under the rug they got to know that there's some funky business when it comes to outer space stuff. Why don't they talk about the potential other planets with other life? And what, what happens about Jesus? Does Jesus get born on those ones? Or how does that work? They, they sometimes talk about how perfect the conditions are for Earth. But that's all within the, the outer space envelope. And they'll, uh, that's just cope, really. That, that doesn't explain, well... What if this perfectness happened somewhere else? Are you going to explain how Jesus works in that case? Uh, did Jesus get born over there too? How does that work? And uh, vault. I'm going to talk about vault in a second. But I think that they're purposefully trying to stay away from the firmament. They don't like to talk about the firmament. It's interesting because the, the pastor at the church where I go... He'll also talk about the psalm that mentions the firmament. Is it, is it Psalm 19? I I can't remember off the top of my head. But it's the one where the, the Nazi scientist mentions it on his gravestone. And there's a psalm that talks about the firmament. And I think it's interesting that the pastor of the church I go to, he references that pretty frequently, but uses a version that omits the word firmament. And it's just like, the heavens declare the glory of God and the sky... His, I don't know. It's a bad translation, though. The firmament is real, and it's not a metaphor. The firmament is a real structure that separates waters above from waters below. And yeah, I think here, the NIV, a little ambiguous. You might be able to fool yourself into thinking that, 
oh, the sky separates lakes from the oceans. And I, I could see people just, you know, twisting it to make it fit with NASA stuff. Anyways. <clears throat> and God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. Somebody brought it to my attention that the it doesn't say that God said that it was good, the firmament, which is kind of interesting. Maybe, be, I don't know. That That's a, a really cool topic, though, to a cool Bible study. How come this one doesn't get, get and that God looked upon it and it was good? Why doesn't it say God saw the the firmament that was that it was good? And the commenter said that it was because the firmament divides us from God. And I think that's an interesting idea that ultimately the firmament isn't a good thing because it's what separates us from God. But maybe it's not a bad thing. It's like a neutral thing. I, I could see that, that the firmament, it's almost like the prison that we're in, but it's the testing ground. It's like a necessary evil. I don't know. What do you think? why it doesn't say that God says the firmament is good. <clears throat> but notice here, the, the NIV says that God called the vault sky. There's some deception there. There is some interestingness about the firmament being called heaven. Is heaven the sky and the firmament and the things beyond the firmament, the levels of the firmament, the heavenly spheres? A lot to talk about here. And anyways, in my opinion, it's just... The truth is in the Bible, and it's not outer space. Outer space is NASA stuff that was made in Hollywood. If you really think about the grand scheme of things, what percentage of, of history did people believe in NASA outer space CGI balls? But what percentage of history knew the Earth was flat and unmoving and that there was literally a dome firmament above us? I like thinking of stuff like that. People will try to make it seem like it doesn't matter, but it does matter. It's the answer to where we live. Some people will say, what does it matter if it's round or flat? Of course it matters. Of course it matters. If Earth is flat, then all of the NASA stuff is bullshit. And we've been fed a lie since birth. And I don't think that you can explain away a flat Earth in the way that they've explained away. I mean, ultimately, they haven't explained how do you get something from nothing. That's always going to be an argument an atheist can't explain. I don't, I don't believe. And, uh, but... They certainly create a lot of confusion in the process and keeping people's heads spinning and uh, preoccupied with nonsense. And when you can go outside and use your eyes and see it doesn't look like doesn't look like the stories they say. Anyways, a vault is a structure. So even in the NIV, it's uh, kind of referencing a structure above us, firmament, rachia an expanse, the firmament, the vault of heaven supporting the waters above, considered by Hebrews as solid and supporting waters above. Not just Hebrews, also anybody who believes the Bible literally should believe in the firmament and the waters above. Uh, what am I trying to think of? Uh, comets. Comets look exactly like a flashlight being shown underwater. And if you've seen the, the P900 footage of stars where it looks like it looks like light dancing on the bottom of a pool yeah there is water up there i believe i think that the the weird rocket launches that they've been doing where it looks very strange they do it right at dusk it almost looks like they're playing with the waters above the firmament but i don't think they can break through some people i think that in their mind it's like this floating layer of water up there no i i think that the firmament is a solid structure a solid see-through structure in my mind <clears throat> so i'm going to keep reading and god called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day and god said let the waters under the heaven be gathered unto one place and let dry land appear and it was so and god called the dry land earth here i want to talk about the translation because here, the NIV says, God called the dry ground land. And I think that this is a really subtle type of spellcraft going on. I think with ball earth, they want your mind to think to... When you hear earth, they want your mind to go to the ball, the floaty space ball. Earth is a planet. I, I believe that's why they changed earth here to land. Because they don't want you to have the more truthful 
understanding of earth is more the elemental fire, water, earth. That is the more correct understanding of the word earth. That, I think, is the deception here. And they want your mind to go there. They're very good with this. The Those in control, it's like kind of silly, but it's something that it's so simple that and it works for a lot of things. I always think of the wretched, disgusting pop star Madonna. It's like they choose the name Madonna not only to be blasphemous, but it's because they want your mind to go there. They don't want the word Madonna to make people think of the mother of Jesus. They want when when you hear the word Madonna, you to go to this disgusting, you know, inverted pop disgusting creature. And in the same way, I think that they play those little games where they they want Earth to be the ball floating in outer space. And so that's why they do these changes. They don't want you to know that dry land is the Earth. I can pick up Earth with my hand. Anybody can go grab a handful of Earth. And I think that that's the more accurate understanding. And it may seem like splitting hairs, semantics, but this is what spellcraft is all about. Words. The pen is mightier than the sword. It's because it's all about ideas and crafting people's minds, programming people. They That is what they get off on doing, programming people. They, they love knowing that they can mold societies so that saying a single word makes people think something. Anyways, let's keep going. And the gathering together of the waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. We're nearing the end. Again, this could really be... I could make multiple videos on this topic. There's a lot of nuance to this and so many contradictions when it comes to... I do not think that outer space land, NASA stuff, is compatible with Christianity. I do not think it is. And I think that anyone who thinks it is, that they're just lying to themselves and that they have all sorts of cognitive dissonance when it comes to outer space stuff. And... Um, uh, what was I gonna? Oh, here the important thing, the last really important detail here that I want to talk about: the sun still does not exist. The sun does not exist here. How does that work with NASA Outer Space Land? There, there's more things in the Bible too. God stops the sun, and how is that going to work with NASA Outer Space Land? If the, if the Earth is supposedly going around the sun and spinning, how, how does the sun stop in the sky? If it's the earth that's doing all the moving. Anyways, uh, a very important something you might miss detail from Genesis 1 is that all of these plants are being created before the sun even exists. So how does that work with NASA? That is not compatible with what NASA tells us about where we are. Uh... And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and to let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. This fits with what we see in reality more than what NASA tells us. There's a reason that the stars look like constellations and they never change. They have never changed throughout all of recorded human history. The constellations have not changed. It's because it's a calendar. And it's for signs and seasons. That's why God put them there. They aren't random. They aren't suns. First of all, that is such a bad. Stars are not suns. First of all, and that's another thing. Uh, the The Bible doesn't say that God created suns that were really far away. No, God created stars and put them in the heaven, in the firmament of the heaven. And they're for signs, and they're for seasons. And they're for days, and they are for years. They, it's our calendar. There's a reason that it works perfectly, and that the stars don't change all the time. If if we were flying and spinning, and our our solar system was flying and spinning, and our galaxy was flying and spinning, we wouldn't have a built-in calendar that never changes, and that always returns to the same spot. That would not happen. 
And I mean, again, I could ramble and ramble and ramble. The moon is the exact same size as the sun. It's also clearly not a rock. The sun is a disc. The sun and the moon are both discs. You can really get into this stuff. It's A lot of this is optics. Using binoculars and using uh, microscopes, you can create the same phase shifts that you see in the moon. It's optics and it has to do with lenses, but I'm just going to leave it there. Because, uh, I mean, and I'll admit that I don't know exactly how it works. It would be cool, though, to have... Let's say I wanted to run experiments on this stuff. I would love a, a large studio with a big glass dome area and then play around with lights. I would have a lot of fun with that. I think you could uh, figure out some interesting optical phenomenons that happen in such a scenario. And especially start to get water involved. How cool would that be? A giant studio with a flat water area and then you have this glass dome and then you have a water layer above it and you have these huge studio lights to play around with. That would be cool. It just reminded me of Spongebob. You know, that's the whole sandy thing in Spongebob, the squirrel that lives in the dome underneath the... There's even a giant tree reference in that. There's the giant tree under the dome at the foot of the ocean in Spongebob. Is that it? Let's just keep going. And, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so and god made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and he made the stars also and god set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and god saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day well that is it for this have any of you asked pastors about outer space stuff maybe when you were brave and younger or who knows, maybe if you are still brave today. To me, it's just a cringe topic that I'm like, I just think most people aren't ready for this stuff. I question how pastors could go to seminary but still shill for NASA stuff. But hey, they shill other stuff that I don't agree with either, like on Pauline stuff, telling telling people to listen to all the rules that were ever made and uh, follow. If you're a servant, do everything your boss says, even though... Uh, there's a lot of bosses out there that tell their, their people to do evil things. So anyways, let me know what you think. I think this is a big problem. I, I think this is huge. I wonder what the attendance would be like at a church where the pastor was not afraid of standing up to uh, flat earth truth. And I think that there's a bigger silent majority out there than, than you would think that don't agree with the NASA stuff and they know NASA's fake and they hate all the outer space stuff. And um, I, I think that there could be a big church revolution that that it would be a great thing to really cling to the truth of the, the Bible and see how much the, the world hates you for doing so. Well, that's it. Hope you enjoyed. God bless everyone.